Like what? Don't knock on my window like that. Why you have it up? Don't knock on my window like that. Why you have it up? I have to knock to let you know I'm here. Don't knock that way you can lower it and talk Just to you. Just get my ticket, bro, so I can go. I'm finna be late, gang. Do what you gotta do. Keep it down. Hey! Keep your window down. Hey! Keep your window down. Keep your window down, I'm gonna get you out of the car. As a matter of fact, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get, get out of the car. Get out of the car right now. We're not playing this game. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out! Get out! Damn! What part of Bellows doing this time? Hey, bro! Hey, bro! I'm getting arrested, bro! I'm getting arrested! I'm getting arrested, bro! I'm getting up! Action! I'm going to visit my brother in Oklahoma. I'm riding with my friend. All of a sudden, behind me, the lights come on, and I'm like, man, I had just gotten stopped, and I'm getting stopped again, maybe like less than an hour later. And so I'm thinking, hey, just get your stuff, get your insurance, everything is good. But all of a sudden, there's a gun on my side, it's a pistol, there's a shotgun on the, on the passenger side, and I, I got two guns looking at me, and they're like, get out of the car. Now, my whole world is flashing in front of my eyes right now, because this thing is going so fast. Pause for a second. Let's go back just a little bit. Less than an hour ago, I just stopped to go get gas. And when I'm in the gas station, what am I wearing? Like normal clothes, okay? Uh, th th there are some Concord Jordans. I don't know if you've ever seen the Concord Jordans, but they got a strap on them. I got a matching jacket that has a hood, but it's just a normal night. When I walk into the gas station, I see the police officers, and I'm just like, good morning, officers. How y'all doing? I'm just excited. I'm finna see my brother. I'm ecstatic. And my homeboy's in the car with me. We finna have a good time. We finna have some real shenanigans, yes? And so when I come out, the officers, they ignore me. They don't say anything. They ignore me. So when I come outside, they're parked behind my vehicle, and the officer, he starts asking me questions. He's like, is your name such and such? And I'm like, yes, my name is such and such. And they said, whose car is this? Well, if you already ran the plate, then you know that I just said that I'm the owner of this vehicle. And then he asked me my address, told him my address and everything, gave him all my information. He told me something about whatever he said, being dismissive. He told me to have a nice day. I said, huh, that's very strange because when I said, good morning officers, you people ignored me, no big deal. Hey, this trip has to go on. I don't know, this trip is probably like seven hours. I drive really fast, so it's like six and a half hours. Cool, let's get it. Back in the car and I'm going, right? And I'm just talking to my friend and I'm trying to tell him like, that's pretty odd. But my friend, he's an interesting type of person, so he probably said something that it agitated me a little bit. We got a trip to go on, all right? A little bit down the way, we come back to present time. Before I hit the rewind, there's two guns pointed at me. There's a pistol on one side, there's a shotgun on the other side, and my heart is racing. Why are these people stopping me? So they take me out of the vehicle, you know what I'm saying? They, they put handcuffs on me. They tell me that I match the description of a black male, 5'8", 200 pounds, coming from Louisiana, and this person had just taken two people's lives. And I'm like, wait a minute. I just got stopped less than an hour ago. They ran all my information, and I came back clean. And now an hour later, somehow, I'm outside of Dallas, and there's someone who's who's just assassinated two people coming from Louisiana. Make it make sense for me, but I'm terrified, right? And so as I'm outside, uh, they're, they're going under my clothes, looking at my chest, looking at my arms, and one officer is talking to me, and he's saying, oh, yeah, you got all the matching tattoos. You're our guy. I'm like, man, how am I supposed to be your guy? When I'm just going to see my brother, I'm riding with my friend. Maybe you can ask him and he can verify who I am. All of a sudden, the young officer, he starts talking to his partner and he says, I don't think this is the guy. Here's where they have the change of heart. At the time, I'm in the military and so I start giving them my duty station, my social security number, my parents' address, every any piece of information that I can recite off the top of my head, I'm giving it to them. So the younger officer, he starts telling the older officer, this isn't their guy. And the older officer, we got him. We got him. <laughs> it's interesting when they think that they got you, right? Because this isn't the only time, but we're going to stay right here at this moment right now. Somehow, some way, 
They let me go. I get in the car. I'm frazzled, but I'm going to see my brother. The journey must go on. I'm trying to talk to my friend about this situation. It's, this is just terrifying. I, I was looking. I thought I was going to lose my life. And my friend, you know what my friend tells me? Wild thing, wild thing. He says, man, I was wondering how I was going to get home. Interesting thing to say to a person who just had that ordeal, this type of ordeal. Where is this all coming from? Tyreek Hill is on his way to a football game, just going to work. And the police have the right to come and harass this man? I thought the police were supposed to help people. I thought the police are just regular citizens like me and you who go to work every day and they're trying to feed their family. And so where in the world did we ever get the idea that the police have the right to agitate and harass regular citizens? No matter what you look like, you're the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. You deserve all the freedoms that our forefathers and me and my grandfather and all of my comrades have fought for, for you to be a free person in America. But instead of getting this, this treatment that is to protect and serve, they're being extremely aggressive and they're harassing citizens. And sometimes this harassment, it takes the life of the citizen and we have outrage and chaos in America because the people who have sworn to protect and serve, they're not serving, they're not protecting, they're only reacting. And when they're reacting, people like me, sometimes we die. And if you disagree, you're a liar. The greatest American alive.